So last time um, when we were doing some drawing, we were using some fairly basic shapes. So we drew a box um, and we then drew some another shape on top of it. So um, today we're going to do a more a, how to draw more advanced shapes. And for that, we're going to use some of the surfacing tools. Um, so Rhino generally thinks in lines, then surfaces, then solids. So if you start with a line, you then, and I will show you this in a little bit, um, you then create a surface and then you, from that surface, create a solid. Okay, so um, if you think of the practice, first I need to draw a line, then I need to draw a surface, then I can turn that into a solid. You can make far more complex shapes than if you were just drawing using the um, solid tools over here. So an example of that, um, the first and easiest one is to draw a planar surface. So I'm going to delete this for a minute. So I'm just going to draw a shape, um, any shape, and I'm going to draw it flat in this view, in this top view. Okay, so one of the first um, surface tools that you'll find is this one here, which is clicking and holding on um, this, which is the surface tooling toolbar. Click the first one, it asks you which curves to build a surface from. My mouse is not working very well today. Press enter when you're done and then you have created a surface. Okay, so that surface can be boxy using this line tool or you can create a curved shape um, and I can add another shape onto this. Now if I click these two, oh, sorry, if I go into here and click planar curves, select these two curves and press enter it will not be able to build a surface um, and you'll see down the bottom here the error message, no faces were made, curves must be form closed planar loops. So in order to create a surface from that, you need to have the surface so it is one continuous loop. Another way of doing that is to use the join tool. Oh, apparently that won't work. Okay, forget that. Um, so if I draw a line between those two, I can then use those to create a planar surface. Right, so I have two planar surfaces down here. From those two planar surfaces I can push those out to create solids. So the tool um, like SketchUp has a push-pull tool, um, Rhino has what's called extrude. So extrude is down here. Um, so it's in the solids and it's right down near the bottom and you can extrude a surface. I will often just start writing extrude and extrude surface and then press enter or spacebar and then you're selecting the surface that you want to extrude. Press enter when you're done and then you tell it how far to go. Um, depending on what option you have ticked over here, so I think Rhino normally defaults to it not being a solid. So it will look like that, it would have a hole in it. Um, if you do it again um, and click solid and click, you will get a solid shape rather than a um, empty shape. Once you have the solid, obviously um, you can do more things with it. Um, but when I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. So how this is useful for you, say you were drawing a car. We'll get rid of this and we'll start again. We'll come down to the right hand side. So we're going to draw the side view of the car. Um, this is the back of my car. This is my windscreen. And this is the bonnet of my car. Whoops. Very boxy car. Now if I join that up, I'm going to stick a line from this endpoint here to that endpoint there. I 
create a planar surface with those curves. And now I have the side of my car. I then extrude my surface and I tell it how far I want it to go. So you can either click or you can put in here that I want it to be 100 millimeters wide. And then I have my car, a very wide car. Perhaps my car needed to be 50 millimeters wide. Okay, so there is my solid car object that I can then add wheels to. Um, I mentioned briefly before in the last video about using layers. So layers are a really useful way um, to hide and show stuff um, when you're not working on it. So um, it helps to rename them. So if you right click them or you click it, double click it, it will turn this as the body of the car. Click my object and then I can either click in here and tell it to be in the body layer um, or I can right click here and I can move the object to this layer. Okay, you see it's gone red, that's because this layer is defaulting to red. I can change that to whatever color that I want. Generally yellow is quite a bad color to pick because when you click it you can't really see if you've selected it. Um, and what's good about this is that you can then turn this on and off. Um, so you can do other parts of your um, design. So say we wanted to put a couple of wheels on this car. I'm going to turn that off for a minute so that it's out of the way. Um, and in this view, I'm going to draw a wheel here. Um, a very simple wheel. So the base of the cylinder is here. That's how round I want the cylinder. And then come up here and I want it to be that big. Okay, so it's going to be like that. Now in Rhino, um, there is no point me drawing um, all those wheels in different places. What I use is the mirror tool. Um, so I will get this object and I will either type in mirror, okay, or the mirror tool I think is under here. There. Click the mirror plane. So what it's asking you to do is draw where you want the mirror to be. So what I want to do is I want to choose the midpoint of my car. And then if I hold down shift, it constrains it to going in 0 or 90 degrees. And then I have a car with two wheels. Now the same thing, to get them in the front, I'll select both of them. And I'm going to mirror it again. Um, and now I have a four-wheeled car. Now you'll see that this is doing all kinds of dodgy, gross things with the rendering of it. Um, that's because there's two surfaces on top of one another. Um, so in order to fix that, we're going to put these on a different layer. And then what I want to do is I want to remove the wheels from the red shape. So um, in here we have a bunch of different solid editing tools. So I want to split a solid. So I'm going to click this one. I'm going to click the body, press enter. Then I'm going to click the four wheels and press enter again. Now what I've done is I've split the body so you can see when I click the red shape it's got the wheels. And I'm going to temporarily turn the wheels off and you can now easily select these. So I'm going to click all of them and I'm going to delete them. So my um, car is now missing the wheels. You'll see on this side we've still got that nasty um, surface on top of a surface thing going on. That's because I've got this um, default layer which was the original surface that I drew. So I can't turn this layer off at the moment because 
um, this little blue dot is clicked which means this is the layer I'm drawing on so if I click on this one I can then turn off the default layer and I can turn my wheels back on so now I have a car that is not doing weird things with the wheels okay so super simple shape um, using layers uh, using um, planar surfaces and um, extruding surfaces into solids. Okay, the next video I'll try and show you how to draw a more complex wheel shape um, and go into a little bit more detail about how to um, split things and cut things nicely.